All right, welcome to lab day. We are going to deduce the distance between two slits for the double slit experiment. Right now, we're observing interference with laser light that has a wavelength of 532 nanometers They pass through a double slit. And you can see that there are places where there are really bright spots where as the laser passes through the two slits, there's a fraction, so the laser being spread out, and each sort of spread out beam from each of the slits, there's a region in space where they're meeting, and we see evidence of the principle of superposition, where the crest of the wave is meeting crest and adding up to a bright spot right here at this point. Remember, we're always at a point, so we're sort of measuring at this point here, which is why we know the distance from the laser to the board is 5.1 meters. The distance between the bright spot is related to the wavelength of the distance to the board and the distance between the slits. So the first value that we get for the distance between the bright spot at 5.1 meters distance D is 13.5 centimeters, so 0.135 meters. So 5.1 meters D. 0.135 meters is x, as you can clearly see on the chalkboard. First period, first watch knows what it's about on lab day. Time to vary the independent variable. Woo! My other laser down here, I can see that we're at uh, 156, 156 inches times 2.54 centimeters per inch. I'm going to a solar powered calculator. Oh. Light, light. We got, what I say, 156 inches times 2.54 centimeters per inch. Divided by 100 centimeters per meter, we want everything in meters. So that gives me 3.96. So I have this very sound of 3.96 meters. Be consistent in your data table, so you have like three digits, three digits, and I'll take that out of zero. Okay. Now the distance x between the bright spot is 10.5 centimeters. 10.5 centimeters, that's 0.105 meters. Take your time up front to really make sure your apparatus is you know, set up nice. I've got the ruler laid down on the floor. So, you know, I put the card on wheels, right? So it's like a very like, we're pushing it. Better to take the time up front to make sure you've got a good setup. So the data collection is very forthcoming. There's like a struggle with you like it every time you, you know, what? Very independent variable. Here we go. Not a lot of this excitement from the new is there, but I get it. You're not, you're not here to experience it. Um, you know, it, 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 it. I don't know. In class, I'm kind of too confused because I don't know what you're talking about. Sorry, guys. All right. So now we're at 10 meters. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. 125 inches is the distance D. Give it all a white light warning so we can do the calculation. And I have to try to get the calculator all the way up here. What is it? 125, right? 125 inches times 2.54 centimeters per inch is 317.5 centimeters per point. I'm sorry, 3.18 will say. Now we're at 
Note that I'm making use of my entire lab space of varying the independent variable over the greatest range that's sort of possible for me. Like, I could just vary, you know, seven times really close to the board. I could put the cart, you know, right there at the first lab station and vary it, you know, over the, the, the course of that, like, two meters. But you get much better results, much better conclusions when you vary the independent variable over the greatest range possible. So I started sort of like far back here in my lab, I'm varying it over like five meters. You know, from five meters in the last data point I'll select, we'll be you know, pretty close up here. Blindingly close. That is 9.00 centimeters on a dot. Nine centimeters. So that is 0 0.090 meters. Let's vary the independent variable yet again. That was a good one. Space is a laser beam. Now we're at ninety four inches. Ninety four inches. Now, the reason why I'm using two point five four centimeters per inch that is the bridge from US customary system to the metric. That has infinite significance. There's infinite significant difference in the mass inverted 2.54 centimeters per inch. We define it that way. That's exactly 2.54 centimeters per inch. So I said right now we're at 94 times 2.54 centimeters per inch divided by 100 uh, centimeters per meter, 2.39. Light. All right, so what I did, um, I'm getting the, the camera here. What I did here was that I'd be able to, you know, not leave my calculator up here as I put it in my, my shirt pocket right here. So, you know, I've got a calculator in my shirt pocket and a meter rule and a laser, and maybe one day. You all can be as cool as me. Okay. Maybe. <clears throat> Got six point six point seven. So 6.7 um, centimeters is 0.067 meters. We got ourselves four data points. We want to try to get maybe uh, three more, right? That was always kind of what we try to go for here. Here we go. We are now at distance G, 65. 65 inches away. All the power calculators, we got a power stone. Flight. 65 times 2.54 centimeters per inch divided by 100 centimeters per meter. Who's got it? 
and talking about backwards. That's pretty cool. Not really in any shirt pockets, but in any shirt pockets. I'm sure that's really nice. Mike? Hopefully, you've realized by now a pattern, a trend. Okay, as we decrease the distance d, so too has the distance x between the bright spots decreased, right? Without exception. If you look at the data, that's true. When we get sort of on inspection, it's true, right? As I push it closer, you can physically see these spots getting closer together. It's all just geometric. Um, a relationship between like the triangle fits to the, you know, we're sort of down in here. And I can still write the readings of the rules as well. All suspicious of a, of a data point is like that. I want to say five even. I had that nine even. What are the odds? It's too perfect enough. And it's not five, it's like four point nine. So it's very carefully. So be as precise as the instrument allows you to be as accurate to the millimeter plate, like this ruler is. Then read it to the millimeter plate. Okay. Um, so it's 4.9 centimeters. So that's 0.049. Right? So that's the millimeter plate. And if it's you know close enough to five, but don't wrap it there, it's not. Okay, so it's 4.9 centimeters. I think we got what, two more to get. No worries here. So we're gonna get one more. We're gonna go half the half the distance to the goal. Okay. After this is for the goal. Uh, our uh the Commodore football team is moved to the to the playoffs and it's round here coming up on Friday. Okay, we're coming. We're gonna be getting half the distance to the goal, half the distance goal touchdown. Okay. Uh, I guess we need to see kind of here. Here I am. Rushing a method of dependent variable, we're gonna have an innocent variable method. Boy, is my face red. <laughs> Redder than this laser beam. 32. 32 inches. Really there in the shirt pocket. I do have a uh, a clapper, you know, and clap and we'll set the lights on and off, but it's not hooked up to these ones. I still have to work on that. Like, like on the time of light. I don't want it all. Um, but I'll show you that. I think it's still kind of back there. It is a, a Darth Vader clapper. Okay, I honor my, my face now. 32 times 2.54, so 32 inches times 2.54 centimeters per inch divided by 100 centimeters per meter. So we got. 0. 0.81, and that's about half the distance to the board. Pretty good. Pretty good. Huh? Remind me to get that bar theater traffic in the black light. So I think, how are we doing on our time? Two good, nickel time, two good. Time. I think he just nominated himself to be the official timekeeper and stuff. But we don't have one, but I guess, you know, maybe we're the official timekeeper. I guess that's reasonable. So we got plenty of time. Okay. Um, so we have a So those bright fringes, sometimes they call bright fringes. Are 2.7 centimeters apart to so 0 0.027 meters, half the distance to the goal.
18 inches. And you can see that the fringes are very close together now, right? So the closest distance to the board, the fringes are the closest together. Always good when you like don't see a violation of the trend that you've established, especially when you, you know, very well sort of understood physics. Um, you know, like this experiment, like I said, the first thing not out of laser, but with candlelight back in um back in 1809. All right. It's one point one centimeter. So one point one centimeters is point zero one one meters. And that should be the last data point that we need to bring up. Like, all right, so there is a complete data table. Remember that we want to plot, we want to plot um, these quantities here, x on the x axis, we want to force it that way against these quantities here. All of your sort of scale graphs, you know, appropriately, make sure you spread it out over more than half the page. Plot the data points. And then find two points which are not out of points, right? But intersect the grading of your graph. You can read off their coordinates. Find the slope. Once you know the slope, we know that that's equal to A over lambda. So lambda is 532 times 10 to the 9, negative 9 per nano. And then we can solve for A, that's the claim. So the claim for this week's lab is the distance between the slits, right? So here's the sort of Square that that light goes through, and then there's a you know, like two little slits in that window. That's the way for the purpose. It's actually a diffraction grating, okay, which means there's a bunch of slits, okay. And so we'll see in this chapter that there is two slit interference and multiple slit interference. The diffraction grating is just a bunch of slits, okay. So you get sharper sort of images there, but I wanted to practice with this equation, okay, but I want to sort of you know introduce a, a, a misconception either, so. What we are using is it's not really a two slit, it's a diffraction rating. And the distance A is like the distance between any two of the slits. Okay. There is a separate equation for diffraction ratings that's sort of like identical to this, but we usually write it um, in terms of angle. So it's like as the laser goes through, it spreads out, and there's an angle that is sort of you know, spreading out. So we usually write the diffraction rating equation in terms of that angle theta. And we'll talk about that you know, tomorrow or, or, or Friday. Okay, so that should give you a good idea about how to move forward with the lab work. Again, the claim is going to be A, which you're saying the distance 